Ebel on the kill is Laney Mosel. Just a little too hot for her to handle the way it came right at her. She couldn't do a whole lot with that. And we mentioned that the Hawks are aggressive at the front line or at the net, and we're seeing it so far tonight. As Volker's serve goes to the back row, now on offense, as they send it down to Rosso, but her kill attempt will go right into the net. Another point for the Hawks, 13-9 now, Coleman on top of Harriet Selby. Back to serve is Volker. Volker's serve goes to Ebel. Ritter now gets in the middle of the defense to Mettinger. Mettinger hits it to the back row as Volker has it over to Landis, but Landis's kill attempt will go out of bounds, 13-10. Now, neither team is able to get much separation. It was a five-point lead at one point for the Hawks, but Harriet Selby able to chip away now three as Ritter goes back to serve. Yeah, they're doing a good job hanging in there so far, and you know, still just three points out, not a bad place to be. Wirtz's kill attempt goes to the back row for the Hawks as they set up their offense as they go over to Lee. Lee gently sets it over. Harriet Selby now on offense as that's partially blocked at the net. Panella Lee's kill attempt is going to be saved. A nice dig there by Mettinger as she was able to save that as that came off, off of Lee's hands. And that's going to go down as it kills. The Hawks had it for Landis. Her second of the set, 14-10 now. Back to serve for the Hawks is Laney Mosel. Mosel's serve goes to Wirtz. Wirtz just able to dig it out. Wolverines scrambling and they just have to get it over. Mosel to Lee. Lee over to a road. As Rhodes going to have it blocked at the net but gets it right back and she's going to send that down for a kill. Her, thir her third of the night so far. Yeah, just put it in the perfect spot. Just kind of tied Ebel, uh, Ebel up there right at the floor. Wirtz has that awkwardly go off her hands and that'll be an ace for Laney Mosel. And that's going to be a timeout on the floor by Harriet Selby. This timeout brought to you by Agtegra Acres Ahead. To maximize your farm's earning potential straight from the start, contact your local Agtegra cooperative today. We will go ahead, step away, take 30 seconds, right back with more Sodak 16 volleyball here on KMLO. Congratulations, Harriet Selby Wolverines, on a great season from all of us at Selby Medical Clinic and Mulberge Regional Hospital and Clinic. It takes a lot of hard work as a team to accomplish the goals that you set out to achieve. So we here at Selby Medical Clinic are here to get you from one win to the next. Good luck in the game from Clint Perman, physician assistant, and Dr. Emily Bowden at Selby Medical Clinic and our whole team at Mulberge Regional Hospital and Clinics. Go Wolverines! 16-10, your score, Coleman Egan on top of Harriet Selby and Dave. Right now we can see why uh, Coach Sandmeyer was worried about the defense against this aggressive hitting for the Hawks. Yeah, and it's not that the Wolverines have been, you know, badly out of position or, or anything like that, but Coleman Egan, they seem to be in the right place at the right time, no matter what, and their, their, their positioning has just been a little bit better. Daniela Lee's kill attempts blocked at the net by Mettinger as Jada Rossow just gets it over. Hawks now on offense again as Lee sends it over. That's dug out by Ritter. Mettinger's kill attempts blocked at the net, but Wirtz is able to save it. Wolverines on offense again as Albies kill attempts going to go to the back row. Hawks now with it as they get it over to number seven. That is Landis. Landis' kill attempt is going to be dug out by the Wolverines as Rossow just gets it over. 16-10, your score is... Abby Rhodes' kill attempt is going to go right into the net, but we can, I think it looked like Jada Rossow got a part of it, so we'll give her a block on that, yeah, her first block of the night. She got up there at the net, got just enough of it to tap it over and you know, get the Wolverines the ball back. Mettinger's serve goes in the middle of the Hawk defense. Landis with it as it's dug out by Wirtz as they go cross court to Ebel. Ebel's kill attempt is blocked to the net by Lee. Hawks now with it again as Lee goes cross court to Landis. Landis' kill attempt is going to be saved by Wirtz. And it will fall down to four. A Coleman Egan, a point 17 11 now. Hawks on top as this is their largest lead of six so far. Harriet Selby has not led, or they've led 1 0 early on in the game, but they haven't led since. 
this is the case much like Potter County. They need to you know, stay in system, stay calm, and try to work their way back. Ebel's kill is going to be dug out by Landis. They go cross court to Gross. Gross's kill is going to fall, and it will be another point for Coleman Egan. Berkeley Gross gets her first kill. 18 11 now is the Coleman Egan lead. Gross. Back to serve for the Hawks is Caden. Cadence Landis. Goes to the back row to Mettinger. In the middle to Wurtz. Wurtz's kill attempt is going to go right into the net. Another point for Coleman Egan, 19-11 now. And Harriet Selby hasn't looked very good coming out of the timeout. No, they have not you know, looked strong. They keep trying to get the kills, but they're hitting them right into their own side of the net. That serve by Landis goes out of bounds, and that might be the little spark that they need to get back. As what we've seen so far from the Wolverines, they're a very good serving team as Jada Rosso goes back to serve. Yeah, down 19-12, to 12. It's, uh would be a good time to go on a run here. Rosso hits it to back to Lee as they go cross court to Gross. Gross kill attempt is going to be blocked at the net. So the Wolverines are on offense again as Ritter gets it over. Hawks now setting it up as that will go out of bounds and it will be a point for the Wolverines now in a 2-0 run as Jada Rosso, go, Rosso goes back to serve. Yeah, and we saw against Potter County, Rosso and, and Ebel were the two that really sparked the team when it came time to serve. And there's another one, a nice ace there by Jada. And we saw Jada be real effective all, all, all over the court last week. Blocks, aces, kills as that serve goes right into the net. Fourth error so far on the Wolverines as the Hawks get the point. And Daniela Lee will go back to serve five points away from a set number one lead. Daniela Lee's serve goes to the back row to Albi. Ritter goes cross court to Ebel. Ebel's kill attempt is going to be blocked at the net. Give the block to both both road girls as they were both there and blocked at the perfect time. And that's going to be another timeout on the floor by Harriet Selby. 21-14, the largest lead of the night for the Hawks. This timeout brought to you by Agtegra. Acres ahead can maximize your farm's earning potential straight from the start. Contact your local Agtegra cooperative today. I think that Coach Sandmeyer took this timeout because she saw that the last timeout wasn't real effective as they now find themselves down 7, 21 to 14. Yeah, they went on a little bit. They got they got a couple of points while uh, Jada Rosso was serving, much like we saw last week. But uh, they've just been struggling at the net, not necessarily blocking, but when it comes to uh, trying to get some of these kills and just put them away, they're hitting them into the top of the net on their side. And I, I don't know... You know what what they need to do to correct that but they're the ones committing the errors for the most part so far where you see the Hawks really in good positioning no matter where they you know they go to save it to kill it to block it they're they're just in a really good spot so this is a chance for the Wolverines to just kind of take a breath collect themselves and see if they can come out and and get some more points and only four kills so far for Harriet Selby and they've been mainly outscored in the department. I know that was something that San Coach Sandmeyer was really worried about was the Hawks' aggressiveness at the net. We're seeing it so far as they hold a 21-14 lead coming out of this timeout as Lee's the serve goes to the back row to Albi. Wolverines on offense as Ebel's kill goes to Lee. Hawks now with it as they go cross court to Gross, and that's going to be blocked at the net, but it will go out of bounds off of a Wolverine defender. And it will be another point for the Hawks. Now 22-14, three points away from a set one win. Lee's serve goes to the back row to Albi as it's dug out. Ritter within the middle of the defense as they get it to Rosso. Rosso's kill attempt is going to be saved by the Hawks as Lee just gets it over to the back row to Albi. They go cross court to Rosso, and that's a good kill attempt as Jordan Rosso gets her third kill so far tonight to lead the, high, the to lead the Wolverines and it's now 22-15 as Wirtz goes back to serve for the Wolverines. Yeah, Jordan put some good heat on that, hit it right at Daniela Lee who's a great player and she could not handle that. It just went way out of bounds. Wirtz's serve goes to Gross as they get it to Rode. Rhodes is going to be blocked in the net but a nice dig by Ebel. Wolverines now back on offense but just miscommunication as Ebel tried to get out of the way because she couldn't hit it twice. Right, she was kind of right there where the ball was and everybody was kind of looking at each other and that's that's not what you need for the Wolverines. 
Back to serve is Ava Mosel for Coleman Egan. They hold a 23-15 lead here as her serve goes to the back row to Albie. Ritter now setting up the offense as Jada Rosso hits it down. That's dug out by Lee. Now back on offense is the Hawks, and that kill attempt by Berkeley Gross will go out of bounds, and it will be a point for the Wolverines. And we're seeing a lot of the Wolverine points scored so far off of mistakes from the Hawks, but they haven't made much, and they got a big lead right now. Yeah, that's uh, something the Wolverines are, you know, unfortunately having to get their points off of those errors like that. And, you know, that turns around, and they make an error, and right back to the Hawks it goes. Hawks with match point here as Wirtz has it for the Wolverines. Ritter over to Rossow as Rossow's kill is going to be right into the net. And that will end the first set. 25-16. Coleman Egan wins. We'll go ahead, step away, take a quick break. Right back in two minutes here with more volleyball action on KMLO. Congratulations to the Harry and Selby Wolverines football team from the team at Walworth County Care Center in Selby. If you're looking to join a winning team, look no further than the Walworth County Care Center. They offer retirement, health and life insurance, paid vacation, pickup shift incentives, and more. They have full-time and part-time positions, RNs, LPNs, CMAs, and CNA positions. They will also train and test on-site for CMAs and CNAs. To apply or for more information, call 605-649-7663 or visit their Facebook page. When it's time to move your livestock, see the crew at Bradner Brothers Trucking in Harriet. You can count on the Bradner Brothers Trucking Team to get your livestock to their destination safely and on time. Whether they're short or long distance hauls and the loads are big or small, Bradner Brothers Trucking is ready to go to work for you. Just call Bradner Brothers Trucking of Harriet, South Dakota, 437-2384. That's 437-2384. At Uptown Market in Selby, they are your local grocery store and a whole lot more. Stop by today and pick up your fresh produce, quality meats, and groceries, but also take a look around the other things they have to offer. South Dakota-made products like Dapper Doodle Candles, Sturgis Coffee, Wine and Artwork, as well as fresh flowers, apparel, home decor, and more. They are also a pickup spot for Turner and Viola's Drug. Uptown Market in Selby. Grocery, gifts, and community. Open until noon on Saturdays. The Super Stop in Harriet is your one-stop shop for gas, diesel, and a whole lot more. Dennis, Wendy, and the gang at the Harriet Super Stop invite you to stop by when you're in the area. You're sure to love their delicious hot stuff pizza, fresh baked caramel rolls, bars, and cookies. They also feature hot dogs, homemade soups and chili, cappuccino, fresh deli sandwiches, breakfast croissants, many convenience items, and a soft-serve ice cream machine. That's the Super Stop, North Highway 83, Harriet. Coleman Egan takes, takes set number one at 25 to 16. And me and Dave are both having a laugh up here because they got a they got a look-alike camera right now going around and everybody in the crowd's loving it. Yeah, they've, they've had uh, what, uh, Uncle Sam up there. They had Elsa from Frozen. <laughs> one, uh, of the, one of the minions. So they, yeah. they are having some fun. And we look at the kill differential in that first set, and it really goes to the Hawks as I only had Harriet Selby down for five kills in that first set. I think that played a big difference because I don't think Harriet Selby was quite ready for how aggressive Coleman Egan is at the Nets. No, they, they really came out in, in every time, like we said, and that's how the how that set ended. Jordan Ross out, went for a kill at the net right into her own side, and we saw a lot of that in set number one. So they need to clean up the errors from that first set, get themselves, you know, 0-0 zero, zero here. Let's get back into this one. Back to serve is a Kylie Volker as that goes over to the Wolverines. Jada Ross out looking to get on the board quick, but that is going to be dug out by Harriet Selby as Landis gets it over for the Hawks to the back row to Ebel as Mettinger just has to get it over and is unable to do so. So the first point will go to Coleman Egan. And after Harriet Selby scored that first point, the first set it was all Hawks and Hawks off to a quick start here already with a miscommunication by Harriet Selby. Ebel with it as she goes cross court to Ritter. Ritter now to Rossell. The Hawks have it on their end as they get it to Landis. Landis' kill attempt is going to fall. Give her number four on the night so far to lead to everybody. And right now she has looked really well at that left outside spot. Yeah, the Hawks have been aggressive. She's, she's putting it in really good spots and making it tough on the Wolverines on defense. 
Mettinger's kill attempt goes into the middle as it's dug out by Mosel. Slandis with another kill attempt has it dug out by Ebel. Wolverines just barely get it over as Danielle Lee has it in the middle. They go back to Lee. Lee's kill attempt's going to be blocked to the net by Rosso. As the height difference plays a factor there, and that's going to be a miss hit by Laney Mosels. That will go out of bounds. And you saw the height factor for the Wolverines play a big factor here. It hasn't done so, so much, but it did right there on that play. Yeah, they need to lean on that as much as they can. Jada able to get way up there and uh, block Lee at the net, and it turned into a point for him. Sophia Ritter's serve will go into the net. Already the fifth serve error so far for the Wolverines. As Laney Mosel will go back to serve for Coleman Egan as Wirtz has it on the back row. Ritter now in the middle of the defense as they get it to Jada Rosso. Hawks down with it as Lee tries to quickly get it over as the kill attempt to buy it. Jada Rosso is dug out by Mosel. Landis on the other end goes to the back row to Albi. Mettinger's kill attempt is going to be saved by the Hawks as Coleman Egan now works on offense and they are unable to do anything. You can give the kill to Mettinger as they were unable, as the Hawks were unable to get it back over. Yeah, Cadence Landis thought it was going to go over the net, didn't make a play on it, and uh, no, it did hit on the Hawks' side. Mettinger with the serve, gets it over. Coleman Egan now with it as Landis sends it cross court, and that is going to go off the hands of Sophia Ritter. Caden Landis give her another kill. She's been real effective so far. We heard Coach Sandmeyer talk about Daniela Lee, but so far it's been Caden, Cadence Landis for the Hawks. Yeah, 4-2 lead for Coleman Egan, and each time the Wolverines have gotten the ball after a point, they've given it right back, and they've got to be able to go on some small runs here. A nice kill in the middle of the defense there by Abby Rode. That's going to be her fourth of the night. And right now, 5-2. Coleman Egan looking to pull away again here in set number two. Back to serve for the Hawks is Cadence Landis. Got five kills on the night so far. No aces as that goes to Albi. Over to Ritter, cross court to Ebel. Ebel is going to hit it out of bounds. And now a 6-2 lead. As we're not we're not seeing the same Wolverine team we saw last week as they played when they played Potter County. No, they're playing more on their heels, and uh, I mean the Hawks are coming out aggressive. They're kind of having to do that, but they need to get a little more aggressive on their side of the ball too. Ebel's kill will go down as number ten Eleni Mosel misplayed it. You can give Ebel another kill, her second of the night. Jaden Rosso back to serve. She's got an ace on the night to go along with a kill as that's dug out by Volker. Danielle Lee on the other end and she will get that to fall as it barely goes over the net and that's her first kill of the night. That's one positive that Coach Sandmeyer's got to be happy with so far. Yeah, they've done a great job minimizing uh, her kills there at the net. Got a little assist from the net on that one and right back to the Hawks as they lead 7-3. to three. Ebel's kill goes out of bounds and it will be another point for the Wolverines. 8-3 to three now as it's a 5-point lead as Daniela Lee will go back to serve for Coleman Egan. Serve gets over as Wirtz has it. So she hits it right away back over. No, they're going to say it fell on the Wolverine side so it will be another point Give the ace to Daniela Lee, her first of the night. Lee back to serve again as that one goes right into the net. And that's something that the, the Wolverines need to capitalize on is that when the Hawks make an error, they got to go on runs, and they, but they weren't able to do that in the first set. Yeah, trailing 9-4 to four now. They have the ball back. This is the time to try to get aggressive and, and get some points up there. Rhodes' kill attempt is going to go out of bounds, and just like that, Wolverines on a two-point run here, 9-5 to five now as it went out of bounds off of Laney Road. Wirtz back to serve again. Wirtz's serve goes to a Gross as they get it to Lee. Lee's kill attempt is going to be blocked at the net, but we're going to get a double hit by number 13, Jordan Rosso. And I, you like the defense there, it was there, but just missed time. The jumped a little early and was unable to get it on the back end of the net. Yeah, after that initial block, unfortunately, she was the only one around the ball, and all she could do is try to hit it and, and maybe sneak one by, but it didn't get, it didn't get by him. 
Serving is Avery Mosel. Wolverines now with it as they go into Rossau, and that's going to fall down. Or are they going to say it went out of bounds? Yeah, it looks like he called it out of bounds. It was close. It was right near the line as Jordan had a nice beat on it, just a tad too long. Ava Mosel back to serve again. 11-5 now as Mettinger digs it out. And that one's going to be spiked down by number 13, Jordan Rosso. And she's now got four kills on the night to lead the Wolverines as now we need to see the Harry Selby go on a run. 11-6 now as Ebel's back to serve. Her serve goes to the Hawks. The Hawks set up as Rode has it, and Rode's kill attempt is going to try to be saved by Albi, but she is unable to do, though. Yeah, it was out of, out of range. She made a diving attempt for it, but unfortunately went straight for the sideline on that one. Elena Rhodes got three blocks, two, one block to go along with three kills as the Wolverines had it, has it as Rosso's attempt is going to be blocked, but a nice job by the Wolverines to get it over. Landis's kill will fall. She will get another one on the night. You know, here they were worried about Daniela Lee, and you've got uh, Elena Rohde with three kills, and you've got uh, Lainey Mosel with two. Mettinger's kill attempt will go out of bounds. 14-6 now, Coleman Egan on top, and we're going to get a timeout by the Wolverines as they need to slow down this Coleman Egan attack. This timeout brought to you by Agtegra. Acres ahead can maximize your farm's earning potential straight from the start. Contact your local Agtegra cooperative today. We will go ahead, step away, take 30 seconds, right back with more Sodak 16 Volleyball here on KMLO. Farming and ranching is the backbone of our local economy, and like any business, it comes with risk. Federal crop insurance products were developed and continue to evolve to help farmers and ranchers manage weather risks. Marinville Insurance has been delivering the federal crop insurance programs as well as company-specific products since they became available. Let us help you wade through the options and make good decisions on products that make sense for your operation. Stop by our local office, visit our website at marinville.com, or call us to set up a visit. Marinville Insurance is a proud sponsor of area athletics. Casey Miners, Dave Williams with you in the Jensen Rock in Santa Broadcast booth. 14 to 16, Coleman Egan on top of the Harriet Selby Wolverines. Coleman Egan did win the first set 25 to 16, and we're still not seeing the same Harriet Selby team we saw last week. And Coach Sandmeyer did say it in the keys to success that Coleman Egan has played better competition. I think that's showing so far early on. Yeah, you can see the confidence on the, the side of the Hawks where the Wolverines there. They're still seeming to uh, play a little timidly and kind of back on their heels in this second set. Jordan Rossell blocks it at the net, but it will fall down after that. So another point for the, for the Hawks and give the ace to a Berkeley Gross as that goes out of bounds off of a couple Wolverines. 16-6 now, the largest lead of the night so far for the Hawks. Continuing to be aggressive. Berkeley Gross's serve goes to Wirtz. Ritter in the middle of the Wolverine offense as Mediger has it. That's going to be saved by Gross as Del Daniela Lee gets it over to Landis. Landis just gets it over. Kill attempt by Mediger is going to be dug out by Lee as that's going to go out of bounds off of a Coleman Egan. Now they're going to say it was tipped. So you can go ahead and give the kill to number six for Coleman Egan. Ooh. Not sure to say the first name, but it goes to Landis. Hawks now with it. So they go cross court to Landis. Wolverines have it now. They go in the middle to Rosso. That's blocked at the net. Ella Road with the block as Albies able to get it over. 17 6 for Coleman Egan on top as. The Wolverines just missed communications all over the court so far now, and it makes it 18-6 now. If you're Coach Sandmeyer, you don't want to see quit from your girls as they find themselves down by 12. Yeah, that second hit really kind of messed up Albee. She was charging in to make the play and had a good beat on it too. Hawks with the volleyball as they go cross court to a road. Road tries to place it down softly in the middle of the Wolverine defense, unable to do so. 
Harriet Selby just gets it over as they go to Landis. Landis' kill attempt is going to fall. Give another one to a Cadence Landis. As she gets on the board, number eight so far, and that'll be another timeout for the Wolverines. 19 to 6. Coleman Egan on top, and we're just not seeing much fight from Harriet Selby so far right now, and Coleman Egan's able to run away with this second set. Yeah, they, they really are. I mean, right from the uh, from the get-go here of this set, they you know, they really haven't relinquished uh, too many points. Just the few errors that they've made have resulted in the, the Wolverine points. Uh, it's, I don't know, it, it is. It looks like a totally different team out here compared to what we saw last week at home taking on Potter County. 19-6, Coleman Egan on top. They did win set number one, 25-16. And we've talked about it all night. Cadence Landis has been a force. She's got eight kills on the night so far to lead everybody. Yeah, she has just been a force picking up Daniela Lee, who they were expecting to really need to keep an eye on. She's been very quiet uh, for the night. She's got one kill and one ace, but Candace Landis has stepped up big time for the Hawks. Hawks with the volleyball as Berkeley Gross's serve goes to the back row to a Wirtz. Ritter with in the middle of the Wolverine offense as they get it to Ross out. Ross out lightly taps it over as Landis's kill attempt is going to be dug out by Wirtz. They go cross court to Mettinger. Mettinger's kill attempt is going to be locked at the net. So the Wolverines still have it as that's going to be spiked down by a Jada Ross out. Eagles still with it and you can give the kill to a number six. Briley, Ro Briley Landis. As that's going to be number two for her. Back to serve again is Berkeley Gross. She's got an ace tonight to go along with the kill as it goes back to Albie. Wolverines finally end this long scoring run by the Hawks. Yeah, Jordan Rossa with a nice little nonchalant spike over the net finally puts an end to the Hawks' run as they trail 20 to 7 and now have the ball back. Albi serve goes to the back row to Gross as they set up their offense over to Cadence Landis. Landis' kill attempt is going to be dug out by Ebel as she quickly gets it back over. Landis on the far side tries to set it down in the nice middle of the defense. Wolverines trying to scramble and they're unable to do anything. Miscommunication again by Harry Checking back into the volleyball match for Coleman Egan is number eight, Kylie Volker. She takes the spot of Riley Landis. Yeah, the alignments of scrambling did not sit all this week. Rondo tries to lightly tap it over the angle cross court to Aiden Landis. Is that in the dugout? Point here by Harriet Selby as it's now 21 to 8. Back to serve for the Wolverines is Sophia Ritter. Ritter's serve goes to the back row to Mosel as they are going to set up Daniela Lee and that's going to barely get over the net. Bettinger now with it on the attack as the Hawks have it again. Go cross court to Berkeley Landis and that's going to be thrown down but dug out nicely by Albi. Both teams going back and forth again, 21 to 8, as that's going to be blocked at the net by Ebel, but it's going to go out of bounds off of her. We're seeing the height play more of a factor, but it's just not falling the Wolverines' way so far, now down 22 to 8. Yeah, all those breaks are actually falling the Hawks' way when it comes to uh, the work at the net. The Rosso sisters doing, uh, doing what they can, getting some blocks, but it's the returns that uh, are kind of going out of bounds. Ebel has it. She gets it to Ritter over to Mettinger. Mettinger's kill attempt is going to be dug out by Lauren Mosel, and that will fall for a Coleman Egan point. 23-8 now, two points away here from set number two win. Yeah, nice placement by Lee on that kill, right where uh, none of the Wolverines were. Just a nice soft tap over for that kill. Now checking in for the first time for Harriet Selby is number nine, Maze Bauman. Hawks still with it as they got match point 24 to 8. Ebel gets it to Ritter. And that's going to be a violation on Harriet Selby. 25 8. Coleman Egan wins set number two here. They're one set away from a 
sweeping on to the state tournament. We'll go ahead, step away, take two minutes right back with more volleyball here on KMLO. If you're looking for a local company to do your grain hauling, call Horstenson Trucking in Selby. They pride themselves on being professional, on time, and having competitive rates. Horstenson Trucking is also looking for drivers. They have both new and late model equipment running regional and local. Call Austin at 605-850-3852. Plus, drug and alcohol testing is available at a low cost of only $40 per test. Call Shane at 605-520-8600. Horstenson Trucking, Selby, South Dakota. At the Campbell County Bank of Harriet and Pollock, our team is dedicated to the traditions of service. We offer a wide array of products to accommodate all your financial needs, including checking and savings accounts, CDs, IRAs, loans, debit cards, credit cards, 24-hour ATM, and online banking. Make sure to check out our special notices in your monthly bank statements. We are the Campbell County Bank of Harriet and Pollock. Member FDIC, proud to serve you and proud to support the Wolverines. When it's time for agricultural, commercial, or residential improvements, you can rely on the guys from Harriet Concrete and Linton Concrete. No job is too big or too small. They can deliver ready-mixed concrete, crushed rock, sand, gravel, and more directly to you. With over 50 years in business, Harriet Concrete and Linton Concrete are proud to deliver quality products at competitive prices. For a quote, call Harriet Concrete and Harriet at 605-437-2455 or Linton Concrete and Linton at 701-254-4681. It's game time, and Shorty's One Stop wishes the Wolverines good luck. It's with pride that Wanda and the staff support your athletic dreams and ambitions. Fuel your game with hustle, and remember, it's teamwork that makes the dream work. Shorty's has your favorite candy bars, salty snacks, thirst-quenching beverages, plus top-tier Senex gasoline available 24 hours. They'll get you there. So save me a seat. And remember, Wolverines, stand tall, talk small, and play ball. Good luck from Shorty's One Stop in Selby. We welcome you back into the Jensen Rock and Sand broadcast booth. Casey Miners, Dave Williams with you. The Wolverines find themselves down 2-0 here early, 25-16, 25-8. And since it was 13-10 in that first set, it's been all Coleman Egan so far. It really has. They have just uh, gone on the offensive. They've been aggressive. And the thing with them, it, it seems like no matter where Harriet Selby sends it back on the court, they are in perfect position to play it, to send it back, and it's just, I mean, they have been, they've been fun to watch. I mean, they're really a tight group, and they know where they're supposed to be, they know what they're supposed to do, and boy, they've really, really brought it to the doorstep of the Wolverines tonight. And one thing we talked about, both these teams having similar records, but uh, Coach Sandmeyer did say in the Keys to Success that... Coleman Egan has played a little bit better of competition, and that might be showing tonight as they've just dominated the Wolverines since the first serve. Yeah, th that better competition makes you a better team, and they've, they had a good record against those better teams. Again, Coleman Egan won the first set 25-16 and then 25-8. Harriet Selby has a lot of work to do if they want to come back. they got to win three straight if they want to see their state, if they want to make it to the state tournament next week in Sioux City. Two falls. Ritter's serve goes back, and that's going to be an ace for her. Exactly what you need to get started here in set number three. You just got to, you know, go at it at this set, try to win this one, and, and keep moving. Ritter back to serve again. Gross has it as the Hawks now set up on offense as they quickly get it over. Lee with it, goes cross court to Landis. Landis has it dug out by Alby. Wolverines with the volleyball as they go cross court to Mettinger. Mettinger sends it to the back rows. They go back to Landis again as Alby with another dig. She's played great tonight in that back row all by herself as Lee has that blocked. And finally, Jada Rosso gets one to fall as she's blocked a lot, but they've all just gotten out of bounds. Yeah, perfect timing, perfect uh, spot to put that one in. Look at that, Harriet Selby with a 2-0 lead, uh, getting off to a great start here in the third set. The Wolverines' largest lead of the night was one. Now they're up 2-0 as the Hawks are scrambling again on offense as they just barely get it over. Albie has it. So they get it to Ritter. Ritter to Sophia, or excuse me, to Rosso. This is blocked at the net by Wirtz, but then blocked again by Cadence Landis, but it goes out of bounds off of her. 
And just like that, it's 3-0. We're maybe seeing them take a little bit out of the Potter County playbook when it was the third set last week as they went as, as the Battlers went on a big run. Now it's Harriet Selby opening it up down 2-0, 3-0. Yeah, taking advantage of having the ball first here in this set. And, you know, they are playing it's a lot more confident right now in this set, too. Mettinger's kill is going to go cross court, but it will go out of bounds for the first point for the Hawks. 3-1 now, and they've been really aggressive with the ball. When they have it, they don't give it back. No, that's something they're going to have to try to force. Uh, the Wolverines trying to make something happen to the net and get the ball back and try to score some more points here. Wolverines with the volleyball as Wurtz is just able to get it over. Ritter sets up her offense as Danielle Lee has it. Goes to the back row as two Wolverines run into each other. Mettinger just gets it over as Cadence Landis has it. They get it back to a road. Road goes to the far back row for the Wolverines. Rossow gets it over in the middle of the Hawk defense. Coleman Egan now on offense as Danielle Lee goes up high, but that's dug out by Albie. Ritter, Ritter gets it to Wirtz. Wirtz just gets it over. Both teams going back and forth again as Rhodes' kill attempt will fall. Abby Rode gets another. Abby Rode, excuse me, gets another kill. Her fifth on the night. Yeah, good placement there, just inside the line, and uh, the diving Wolverine player just couldn't dig that one out. That serve by number ten, Elaney Mosel, will go out of bounds. A serving error for her, and that's something that the Wolverines need to take advantage of. They haven't done it, but they haven't been able to do it tonight so far as Mettinger goes back to serve. Yeah, 4-2 lead right now, trying to maintain that here. Rose kill attempt's going to be blocked, but it gets dug out by Albie. Wolverines got to get it over here on the third hit, and they just do. Excuse me, it goes right into the net. We're, we're kind of vantaged up, so some of these look like they're going to get over, but then all of a sudden they fall. Yeah, fortunate there for the Wolverines. The lead down to 4-3, and the Hawks have the ball again. Cadence Landis back to serve for it. Coleman Egan. As she barely gets it over as Albie's able to dig it out. Ritter just has to hit it over for the Wolverines. Hawks setting up an offense again as Gross's kill is going to be blocked at the net. And you can give that block to Jada Rosso as her third on the night, her second of this set as she will go back to serve. Hawks up now 5-3. Coming up uh, big right there, Jada's back to serve. The Wolverines have got a 5-3 lead and see if she can lead them to a little bit of a run here. Wolverines now with the volleyball again as Ritter just hits it over, tries to hit the far back corner, unable to do so. Daniela Lee now with it, has it dug out in the back row by Rosso. As that will go down as a Coleman Egan point, the Wolverines unable to get it over. Tough break there for Harriet Selby. They, you know, they've been going back and forth here in this set. It's a 5-4 lead. Can they maintain that and not give it up to the Hawks? Daniela Lee goes back to Albi. Probably could have been out of bounds, but Rosso's kill attempt is going to be blocked, but it's going to be too strong, and it'll go off the hands of a Coleman Egan defender as Jordan Rosso will get another kill. Wirtz back to serve for Harriet Selby as they're up 6-2. That goes to the back row to Lee. Hawks get it to Road. Rhodes kill attempt goes cross court, but is able to find the, the opening as she will get another kill. Abby Road with another kill. And yet we continue to go back and forth. Harriet Selby with a 6 5 lead. Somebody gets a point, uh, they give it back up. The other, I mean, it's just back and forth in this one. Nobody's really taking uh, hold of this third set just yet. Mosel serve goes to the back row to Albi as Albi gets it back and sends it over. Danielle Lee in the middle of the Hawk offense as they go to Road and her kill attempt. They're going to say was a f will fall. I think that the Wolverines wanted it, did it out of back down as it killed Elena Road. her fourth of the night and both road girls have come off the bench for Coleman Egan and played really well they really have doing a great job and they've tied this one up at six apiece nice dig there by Lee as the road Rhodes has again Ritter now with it for the Hawks as Ebel's kill goes to the back row to lose and that will fall for a kill for Landis
Riley Landis gets another kill, her third of the night. And the, and the kills aren't either for the Hawks is Ava Mosel. Yeah, the kills have been a lot more spread out, like you said, for the Hawks, where where uh, Ebel has three. You've got Jordan Ross out with five for the Wolverines, and that's really it so far. Serving error by Ava Mosel, her first error of the night now. Eight to seven, Coleman Egan on top as Ebel is, Ebel is back to, to serve. As Gross's kill attempts can be partially blocked as Wirtz has to dig it out. Wolverine's just barely able to get it over the line. Landis has it blocked at the net, and you can give that block to Jordan Rosso, her first of the night. Both Rosso girls now with four blocks combined. This is tied up, and we saw last week when Ebel was back there serving, the Wolverines were able to go on a little bit of a run. Yeah, it would be nice if she could provide a little spark between her serves and Rosso getting in the way there at the net. And Rosso was able to block it, but it went out of bounds off of her, something we've seen so far tonight as the, those blocks at the net because Harriet Selby does have a height advantage. They just been unable to get those to fall on the other side as Bettinger's kill attempt goes in the middle as it's dug out by Daniela Lee over to Landis and Landis just miss hits it as it will go right into the net and we're now knotted up at nine apiece again here in set number three. Yeah, miss hit there by Landis, a break for the Wolverines. They get the ball back as Albie's going to serve it. Albie serve goes to the back row to Gross to Lee now. The Hawks just having to get it over as Gross goes to the back row to Albie. Ritter setting up the offense as they go in the middle to Rosso. And Rosso saw that the Hawk defense was moving to the, to the left and saw the opening, but just unable to get it right there, yeah. right past the net. Saw that open spot on the court and uh, unfortunately mishit it into the net. Volker serve goes to Ebel as Ebel gets it to Ritter. Ritter now over to Mettinger. Mettinger's kill attempt will go to the back row to Volker. Hawks with it again as Cadence Landis has it blocked by Rosso at the net. Rosso now back with it and tries to do what she did last time, but it's ineffective as the Hawks scramble quickly. 10-9, Coleman Egan on top as Rosso goes to the back row and she will finally get the kill to fall as Jada Rosso gets her second kill of the night to go along with one ace and three blocks. And just like that, we're knotted up at 10. You mentioned earlier, one team scores, the other team scores. It's been back and forth in this set number three so far. Yeah, it looks like the Wolverines this set. They're a little more confident. They're a little more settled. And it took them until this third set, unfortunately. And we'll see if they can hang with them all the way. Caden Landis adds to her kill total as she is up to 10 on the night. Excuse me, 9 on the night. As she leads everybody, and it's not even close by either team. Uh, she leads everybody on the night in a kills unofficially as Laney Mosel goes back to serve. That barely gets over to his dugout by Wirtz. Ebel's kill attempt will go right into the net. And it's now a 12-10 lead here. Coleman Egan looking to go on a run up to... Back to serve is Laney Mosel as her serve goes to Ebel, and Ebel just has it look like she backed up a little too much and just had it go off the knuckles of her hand, and it's now a 3-0 three, three, three scoring run here by the Hawks. Yeah, she was just back one step too far and uh, just kind of came awkwardly off her hands. Bettinger's kill attempt is going to be blocked, but she saves it as Ritter has it. Wirtz just hits it over. Hawks now setting up on offense as they go over to a Gross. Gross gets it over as it goes to the back row to Albie. Bettinger's kill attempt blocked at the net by Lee, but the Hawks scrambling on offense again as they go cross court to Cadence Landis. Landis' kill attempt is going to fall as it goes off of a Wolverine defender. She's got 10 now on the night, and she just keeps rolling for the Hawks. Yeah, she's really just doing a great job leading this team, and the biggest lead of this set for the Hawks. 14-10, Coleman Egan on top of Harriet Selby. Winner advances to the state volleyball tournament in Sioux Falls next week. As Wurtz's kill attempt will go directly into the net. Now we're seeing some of those miscues by Harriet Selby in those first two sets creep up again, and it's 15-10 now, Coleman Egan on top. Yeah, they were playing pretty solid there, and like you said, those errors creeping back in for the Wolverines. They need to settle in. Ross out in the middle, hits it over, but it's going to be saved by the Hawks as they go cross court to number eight, Kaylee Volker, and that will go. But a point to Harriet Selby. 15 11 now as the Wolverines will look to chip into this lead. Back to serve is Pasha Mettinger. 
Bettinger's serve gets over the net as he goes to Volker. Now over to Mosel as that will fall for Abby Road. Another kill for her, her fourth of the night. Now 16-11, a five-point lead. The largest lead so far in this third set by either team. Is back to serve as Cadence Landis for the Hawks. Landis to serve barely gets over as Albi has it. Ritter sets up the offense as Ebel's kill will go out of bounds and another point for the Hawks. And we're going to get a timeout on the floor by Harry and Selby. This timeout brought to you by Agtegra. Acres ahead can maximize your farm's earning potential straight from the start. Contact your local Agtegra cooperative today. We'll go ahead and step away. Take 30 seconds right back with more Sodak 16 volleyball here on KMLO. From the early days of South Dakota statehood through today's digital revolution, BankWest has remained committed to helping customers and communities succeed. BankWest Associates uphold this commitment by developing innovative products, tailoring financial solutions to customer needs, and actively supporting community causes. For a bank committed to helping you and your community prosper, choose BankWest. BankWest. Convenient. Connected. Committed. Member FDIC. 17-11, Coleman Egan on top of the Harriet Selby Wolverines as they're looking to sweep the Wolverines here tonight in Watertown as they have their largest lead so far here in the third set by six. But we're seeing a lot better Wolverine volleyball team here in the third set, Dave. Yeah, they came out really solid, uh, playing a lot more confident from the look of it. And, you know, it was just going back and forth for the longest time. And now the Hawks have been able to uh, work up to a six-point lead. The Wolverines just need to settle in, play like they were at the beginning of this set. Landis to serve goes to the back row to Mettinger over to Albias. Ebel just gets it over. Hawks now setting up their offense again as they go in the middle to Kohler, excuse me, to Volker as Volker will get her first kill tonight as it went out of bounds off of a Harriet Selby defender, 18-11 now as Coleman Egan's looking to punch their ticket to the state volleyball tournament. Yeah, Alby was trying to get a good play on that. Instead, sent it towards the uh, wrong back corner of their own zone. Ritter over to Ebel as Ebel's kill attempt is going to be dug out by Landis. Daniela Lee with it, tries to hit it over in the middle of the defense, but it's going to be blocked by Rosso. Wolverines now with it again. Wurtz has to hit it over on the third hit as Landis sets up the offense again. They go in the middle to Road, and she's going to send it right into the net. A much-needed point there for Harriet Selby as it looks like Jordan Rosso is going to check back into the game. Yeah, caught a break there into the net, so uh, Jada will go back and serve up for the Wolverines. Volker has it as she hits it right over, but another nice dig by Volker as the Hawks set up their offense as Gross hits it over. It's going to be saved by Rosso. She gets it right back and sends it over. Both teams going back and forth right now as Coleman Egan holds a 12 to it. It holds an 18 to 12 lead as Ebel's kill is going to be blocked at the net, and it will fall for a block by Abby Road, her second of the night. 19 12 now, six points away for Coleman Egan as they will try to punch their ticket to the state volleyball tournament as Daniela Lee goes back. And she's been kind of a, a non factor in tonight's game, only two kills, one ace. For the Dan for Daniela Lee, as I know that Coach Sandmeyer was really worried about her, and that's going to fall for a point. Give the kill to Berkeley Gross, her second of the night, as that just hit the line. It did. Uh, the, the Wolverines thought it was out, let it go, and no, it was inside. And my goodness, 20 to 12, the Hawks, uh, they're not letting up. It, it was, you know, it looked like maybe the Wolverines at the beginning of this set going back and forth might be able to, you know, get, steal this one away because they looked a lot better. They looked more confident coming into this set. Their play was decent, but all of a sudden we saw, like you said, some of those uh, mistakes hitting it into the bottom of the net, the miscommunication, you know, hitting it, you know, getting these bad hits off of some of the serves. So, you know, you hate to see it uh, because they've worked so hard and they just haven't looked overall up until this set like the Harry and Selby team we've seen. Yeah, and it's been, at one point it was 10-10, now it's 20-12, to so Coleman Egan on a 10-2 run right now to open this thing wide up as they're five points away from punching their ticket to the state tournament. Yeah, the only, uh, only other game going on early right now, Kadoka area and uh, Burke. 
And that one's on our sister station, KMLO. Burke uh, just finished that one off with a three-set sweep. So they are on their way to the next round. And yeah, Burke, I believe the number two seed in a Class B, so they'll advance to the state tournament. That game was on KPLO with Darren Boyles as that will go out of bounds off of the Wolverines. So another point for the Hawks, 21-12 now. As Coleman Egan's looking to sweep Harriet Selby tonight as Daniela Lee will go back to serve. Her serve goes to Wurtz as Wurtz gets it to Albi. Now over to Mettinger. She just has to get it over. Gross's kill attempt will fall for the Hawks. Her third on the night to go along with one ace. 22-12 now and Coleman Egan two points away from punching their ticket to the state tournament. Daniela Lee's <laughs> Daniela Lee's serve just barely gets over as Albi has to send it over for Harriet Selby area as Road tries to get it over and she will effectively as both the other teams now we have a double header here tonight Balk are on the court as this one's closing out both teams going back and forth here as Mosul gets it to Road into the middle of the defense in the middle of the offense to Road excuse me 22-12 Coleman Egan on top as Gross is Kill attempt is going to be dug out by Mettinger as the Wolverines just get it over. And that will fall for a kill by Elena Rode as she saw that the Wolverine defense was spread out and there was a huge hole in the middle of the defense. Yeah, she put it in the perfect spot. Nobody could get to it for the Wolverines and just two points away for moving on to the state tournament. Michaela Hansen checking in for the Wolverines, one of the seniors on this team as it goes to her, as she'll hit it to Ritter. Ritter over to Wurtz. Wurtz's kill attempt is going to be dug out by Lee, but they are unable to save it, so give Cheyenne Wurtz her first kill on the night. And that's kind of a big thing because it's been all Jordan Rosso so far tonight for the Wolverines. Yeah, how about that uh, hustle there by Presley Lose for the Hawks going right into the bench trying to save that one. 23-13 now as Daniela Lee has it as they get it to Road. Road this kill attempt is going to be dug out by Ebel. As that kill attempt from Rosso will go out of bounds now. Match point here for Coleman Egan. 24-13 as they're looking to punch their ticket to the state tournament next week in Sioux Falls. Back to serve is Ava Mosel. Mosul serve goes to the back row as it's going to be off of Mettinger's hands and that will do it here for us tonight in Watertown as Coleman Egan will advance to the state tournament as they win 25-16, 25-8, and 25-13. to We'll go ahead, step away, and be right back in three minutes here on the postgame on KMLO. Did do you know Camwall Electric in Selby provides more than electricity? They also offer a full-service wiring crew, marathon water heaters, and now you can manage your entire electric account 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, by computer, tablet, or smartphone with the Smart Hub app. Easily check your electric usage, make payments, communicate directly with Camwall, and always look forward to new features on the horizon. Just download the Smart Hub app today. Camwall Electric, your touchstone energy partner. Congratulations, Harriet Selby Wolverines, on a great season from all of us at Selby Medical Clinic and Mobridge Regional Hospital and Clinics. It takes a lot of hard work as a team to accomplish the goals that you set out to achieve. So we here at Selby Medical Clinic are here to get you from one win to the next. Good luck in the game from Clint Perman, physician assistant, and Dr. Emily Bowden at Selby Medical Clinic and our whole team at Mobridge Regional Hospital and Clinics. Go Wolverines! Congratulations to the Harriet Selby Wolverines football team from the team at Walworth County Care Center in Selby. If you're looking to join a winning team, look no further than the Walworth County Care Center. They offer retirement, health and life insurance, paid vacation, pickup shift incentives and more. They have full-time and part-time positions, RNs, LPNs, CMAs and CNA positions. They will also train and test on site for CMAs and CNAs. To apply or for more information, call 605-649. 
When it's time to move your livestock, see the crew at Bradner Brothers Trucking in Harriet. You can count on the Bradner Brothers Trucking Team to get your livestock to their destination safely and on time. Whether they're short or long distance hauls and the loads are big or small, Bradner Brothers Trucking is ready to go to work for you. Just call Bradner Brothers Trucking of Harriet, South Dakota, 437-2384. That's 437-2384. At Uptown Market in Selby, they are your local grocery store and a whole lot more. Stop by today and pick up your fresh produce, quality meats, and groceries, but also take a look around the other things they have to offer. South Dakota made products like Dapper Doodle Candles, Sturgis Coffee, Wine and Artwork, as well as fresh flowers, apparel, home decor, and more. They are also a pickup spot for Turner and Viola's Drug. Uptown Market in Selby. Grocery, gifts, and community. Open until noon on Saturdays. The Super Stop in Harriet is your one-stop shop for gas, diesel, and a whole lot more. Dennis, Wendy, and the gang at the Harriet Super Stop invite you to stop by when you're in the area. You're sure to love their delicious hot stuff pizza, fresh-baked caramel rolls, bars, and cookies. They also feature hot dogs, homemade soups and chili, cappuccino, fresh deli sandwiches, breakfast croissants, many convenience items, and a soft-serve ice cream machine. That's the Super Stop, North Highway 83, Harriet. Welcome you into the post game show here on a KMLO. Casey Miners, Dave Williams here with you in the Jensen Rock and Sand broadcast booth as the Harriet Selby Wolverine season comes to an end tonight as they lose 3 0 to the Coleman Egan Hawks 25 16, 25 8, 25 to 13. Looking at the stats for you so far for Coleman Egan, they were led tonight by Cadence Landis, and I know she had 10 kills on the night and led all scores. The next closest was seven. Abby Road had it, but Cadence Landis was electric tonight for the Hawks. Yeah, she really stepped up and uh, did a great job leading the Hawks team. Just strong, kind of like we saw Jada Rosso last week where she was all over from serving to working at the net. and. You know, getting those kills, that's what uh, what Cadence did for the Hawks tonight. Also looking at the stat sheet, Bertley Gross had three kills, one, is, one ace tonight, and then Kylie Volker had one kill. Lee Mosel had a one ace and one kill tonight unofficially. Daniela Lee, the force that we heard Coach Sandmeyer talk about, they did a good job against her. She was held quiet tonight, two kills and one ace, but they weren't able to counteract for the factor that was Cadence, Cadence Landis. Yeah, she picked up where, you know, they were looking for Daniela to do all these things, and they did. Like you said, they did a great job containing her, not giving her a whole lot, and effectively, you know, blocking her at the net. But yeah, Candace Landis really picked up that slack, and uh, you know, led the Hawks in this one all night long. Abby Rohde had seven kills to go with two blocks. Elena Rohde had five kills and one block. And then also Briley Landis had a three kills. Looking at it for the Harriet Selby side, Pasha Mettinger had a one kill. Cheyenne Wirtz had one kill. Sophia Ritter had two aces tonight. That led everybody here in the game tonight. Jordan Rosso had one block to go along with six kills. Maya Ebel had two kills. Jada Rosso with three blocks, one ace, and two kills. Dave, not the way if you're Harriet Selby you wanted to end tonight, but something to build on because they only had one senior that played. Yeah, they've got a, a nice young core, and, uh, you know, they're going to be coming back. They're going to be able to look back at this. And, you know, they never really seemed comfortable on the court in those first two sets. It took to, until set number three. They looked more confident. They looked like the Harriet Selby team we had seen. But then again, they started to, you know, midway through that set, those, you know, errors crept in, and I don't know if it got in, you know, got in their head a little bit. And of course, the Hawks were playing strong all night long and just took advantage of that. Yeah, and, and it's definitely something if you're Coach Sandmeyer to build on to next season because you know for a fact, and you saw it on those girls' faces, they were not happy with how they played tonight. No, not at all. And uh, this is something that is going to stick with them all the way through. You know, as they're getting ready for next season, they're going to remember we got this far. We were right on the doorstep of getting into the state tournament, and we just didn't step up. So this time... We need to step up. We need to play harder. We need to play together because we saw a lot of scrambling tonight, mm -hmm. and we did not see that in their other matches. And it just seemed like they were out of sorts. 
where you looked at the Hawks and on defense, anytime the ball came over to their side, somebody was there. They were in the right spot to play the ball to set things up, even if it was just to get the ball over. They, they really did get caught off guard on the court, you know, but very rarely tonight. Well, we will go ahead and step away. We'll be back with the big play of the game. First, we've got to hear from the big play of the game sponsor, Family Dental of Pier and Gettysburg. The team at Family Dental in Pier and Gettysburg are devoted to spending time with each patient to answer all questions and address any concerns that arise. Family Dental wants all their current and future patients to feel welcome and comfortable and to have the healthiest, best-looking smile possible. They can take care of all your family's dental needs with cleanings, checkups, implants, in day crowns, and many other dental services. Dr. Ryan Jensen welcomes new patients. Family Dental in Pier and Gettysburg, caring for all your family's dental Welcome you back into the Jensen Rock and Sand broadcast booth. And Dave, to me, the big play of the game was when number 10, Laney Mosel, was back to serve there in the first set and the third. They were able to go on a big runs and close out this game for the Coleman Egan Hawks. Yeah, she really did a great job there from the service line. Uh, just, you know, and we didn't see a ton of aces. She was just putting it in the right spot, letting her defense. You know, take care of the ball, going on offense, and getting the points. And, yeah, she really did a great job back there. That was the big play of the game. We'll go ahead, hear from Venture Communications, and be right back with your player of the game on KMLO. There's Thursday Night Lights and all of the weekend highlights, but nothing beats Monday nights with Monday Night Football on Venture High Def TV. You'll catch all the action Monday, November 14th. Tune into ESPN Channel 21 to see the Commanders head to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles at 7 p.m. Venture Communications, your home for ESPN and Monday Night Football. Call Venture Communications today for high-def TV service and more. Call 605-852-2224. Dave, for me, the player of the game is a no-doubter. It's got to be Cadence Landis of the Coleman Eakin Hawks. She was phenomenal tonight, led everybody with 10 kills, and really picked up to where Daniela Lee couldn't be effective. Yeah, she really uh, earned that Venture Communications player of the game tonight. What, 10 kills? Yeah. I mean, she was just all over the place, leading this team, making sure that uh, you know things got finished on the offensive side, and boy, did she do that. We want to also thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Again, our video sponsors for tonight's games were CHS River Plains and Canby's Pass. And the video scoreboard sponsor, Mobridge, Mobridge Regional Hospital and Clinics. Also want to thank all of our lovely sponsors for the in-game as well. That's Marin Beal Insurance and Selby, Thorntonson Trucking and Selby, Campbell County Bank Insurance and Harriet Harriet Concrete, Shorty's One Stop Bank West, Cam Wall Electric, Selby Medical Clinic, Walworth County Care Center, Brander Brothers Trucking, Uptown Market, Harriet Super Stop. Also want to go ahead and thank the South Dakota Office of Highway Safety. The South Dakota Office of Highway Safety reminds you to keep your eyes on the road, not on your phone. This playoff game was brought to you by 100.7 KMLO, our advertisers, the member schools of the South Dakota High School Activities Association. No broadcast in whole or in part may be made without the written permission of the SDHSAA. Coleman Egan advance and punches their ticket to the state tournament in Sioux Falls as they win 3-0 tonight over the Harriet Selby Wolverines 25-16, 25-8, 25-13. For Dave Williams, I'm Casey Miners signing off tonight. Everybody have a great rest of your Tuesday night.